electronic devices that may interfere with our ceremony. Thank you. While we encourage photographs throughout our ceremony, we ask that during the playing of the national anthem, you please stay stationary. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our honorees. Corporal Lena Derricott Bell King. Private Anna May Wilson Robertson. Please be seated. Each of our honorees are now being presented a special bouquet. The arrangements consist of green and gold flowers symbolizing the women's auxiliary core colors of moss green and old gold. Each bouquet contains three red poppy plants representing the three six triple eight women who died in the line of duty when their military vehicle 
accidentally ran up the road on 8 July 1945. The single white flower symbolizes the other six Triple Eight members who are no longer with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Malia Wiley will give her rendition of It Is Well in honor of the ladies of the six Triple E's.
We ask that you remain standing while Mr. Melvin Lister leads us in the playing of our national anthem and for the invocation, which will be given by Chaplain Reynard Churchwell. Let us pray. Through Almighty God, we thank you for your great strength, your mercy and grace. And we thank you that no matter what we are, you're always with us. This morning, dear God, we're here to honor and give thanks for the sacrifice and courage of the 6 AAA Central Coastal Battalion. We thank you, dear God, for their faith, their strength, selfless service, and endurance 
through many struggles of social injustice that they faced, but maintained their will and desire to never quit, sorting vast amounts of mail for the morale of soldiers, family members, civilians, and their country. We also thank you for the gift that you have graced us with on this day of having the opportunity to see and hear from five of our soldiers of the 6th Triple Eight, for they are truly and always will be soldiers for life. Let us also remember and give thanks for the many soldiers of the 6th Triple Eight that have gone on into eternity. May they forever be blessed as we lay them before the altar of liberty. And so today, as we remember, honor, and celebrate the 6th AAA Central Postal Battalion, we thank you for allowing this day to point towards an even higher tomorrow. And may we never forget 6th AAA, no male, no morale. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Please be seated. The theme of the festivities for this week is the 6th Triple Eight Legacy, It Is Well. Today we are here to recognize and celebrate the 6th Triple Eight Central Postal Directory Battalion for their honorable service to the nation. The 6th Triple Eight produced great results in Birmingham, England during World War II. With the new tracking system they created, the women processed an average of 65,000 pieces of mail per shift and cleared the six month backlog in just three months. The women adhered to the motto of no male, no, excuse me, no male, low morale, providing essential support to the US military and the European theater by linking service members to their loved ones back home. They achieved unprecedented success in solving the military's, excuse me, the military's postal problems. And in February 1946, the remainder of the unit returned to the United States, and the unit was disbanded. There were no parades, no public appreciation, and no official recognition for their accomplishments. For over 70 years, their legacy remained dormant. The monument dedicated today ensures that the unit's legacy is now awakened and will be for years to come. Yes, today, it is well. Please allow me to introduce the official party for today's ceremony. Our host and keynote speaker for, today, for today's ceremony are Major General Douglas Christman, Director, Mission Command Center of Excellence, Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Senator Jerry W. Moran, United States Senator, Kansas. Colonel Marty L. Sutton, Garrison Commander, Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Mr. Stanley Early, son of Lieutenant Colonel Charity Adams, first, first African American woman to be an officer in the Women's Auxiliary Corps and the first commander of the 6th AAA and the dedicator of the monument. Commander Carl, Carlton Philpott, United States Army retired, original member and driving force behind the Buffalo Soldier Monument Committee. We would also like to acknowledge our special guests and we have several here with us today. The Honorable Mike Preisinger, Major, sorry, Mayor, Leavenworth, Kansas. The Honorable Frank Offit, Mayor, Platte City, Missouri. The Honorable Jeff Pittman, State Representative, Kansas, and Mrs. Pittman. Lieutenant General Robert Arger, U.S. Army retired, civilian aide, emeritus to the Secretary of the Army. Mrs. Michael Lundy, spouse of the Commanding General, Combined Arms Center in Fort Leavenworth. Mrs. Douglas Christman, spouse, director, spouse of the director, Mission Command Center of Excellence. Sergeant Major Christopher Prosser, Sergeant Major, Mission Command Center of Excellence. Trooper John Bruce, President, Greater Kansas, Greater Kansas City Leavenworth Area Chapter, 9th and 10th Cavalry. Family, mem family members of honored guests, and the family of those who served in the 6th AAA Central Postal Directory Battalion. Commanders, Command Sergeants Major, friends and family of Fort Leavenworth. We would also like to acknowledge family members of the 6th AAA in attendance today. PFC Vashti Murphy Matthews, we have her daughter, Betty E. Schuler, 
son, Army Lieutenant Colonel Retired, Roger R. Matthews, and his spouse, Carol Matthews. Her grandson, Roger Matthews II, her granddaughter, Dr. Raina Whetstone, and the great-granddaughter, Cameron Matthews Williams. Representing PFC Dora Williams is her daughter, Anna Mae Thomas. Representing technician, fifth grade, Willie B. Irvin Partridge is her son, Willie Alvin Partridge. Daughter, Brenda Partridge Brown, and grandson, Antonio Partridge Sr. Representing First Lieutenant Margaret Barnes is her daughter, Patricia Barnes McConnell. Representing Private Lydia Easter Thornton are her daughters, Alva Stevenson and Rosenda Moore. Finally, representing Lieutenant Colonel Charity Adams Early is her son, Stanley Early. Ladies and gentlemen, the garrison commander of Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, Marnie L. Sutton. Along with the family and friends of the 68th 
Central Postal Director Battalion, and especially the five living legacies and the son of Lieutenant Charity Adams. My task this morning, in addition to turning the monument over to the Army of Maintenance and Upkeep, is to acknowledge the supporters and contributors to this monument, to briefly explain how this project came about, and to turn this monument over to the Army. General Otter said in a meeting one time, Lieutenant General Otter, if you see a turtle on a stump, you know someone put it there. So when you see a monument in the Buffalo Soldier Military Park, it took a lot of people and organization to make it happen. So John Christman, at this time, fully paid, no debt, no lien. Yep. Father, grandfather, and his mother, 
all have been working with us. You give them, you pay a bill, they give you the same amount back in a donation. Cottage Stonework, another three years, three generations. Robert Brogdon, who made the beard, long as the first cars when we did the Buffalo Soldier Monument in 1992. He helped pay for the limousine that you all had the other day. Mr. Philip, Tony, Mr. Philip A. Tony Martin owned two vehicles that the raise you had today that you never had. Alexander McKenna, owned it for over 40 years, donated the lights. Richard Island Culture Center Museum, it's Phyllis Bass, started with us 30 years ago. Two new partners on this project are architect, Mr. John Freshnock of Williams Spurgeon Pool and Freshnock. We struggled with a design, so Mr. Freshnock came on board. Another new partner is Burns and McDonald. I'd like to acknowledge Ms. Kelly Jeff Cope, Director of Procurement, who we thank you for your general sponsorship. Mr. David Barr, Barr Vice President, and Ms. Michelle Word, Principal and Business Diversity Manager, and Pro Circuit Electrical Company, who put the lights in for free. If you like the graphics, how many people like the graphics on the monument? The young lady that did that is Alicia Palomino from Las Vegas. She only charges $50 an hour and then got bills for everything. And if you don't see any misfair words or poor punctuation, you have to thank my sister, David Paul and Phil. <laughs> it's grace is sufficient that will supply all your needs. I have not learned to obey to succumb to the words of faith. Last few days, Christ Chocolate gave us free food. Call a contractor for a bill. Nothing old. Went to another contractor. Reduced the bill from $12,000 to $9,000. He worked as interns at their rate and reduced his power. He didn't charge us all his power. Other contributors, Armed Forces Bank, Association of the United States Army, Country Club Bank, Frontier Community Credit Union, most of fraternities, Alphas, Omegas, and Deltas. If I miss anyone, I'll ask you to stand at the last. And Luke Lemmer, Community Service Organization, more than 12 nonprofit groups. The design team. I thank the, the memorization committee for having us come up with a design that first one was 80 feet long, about 80 feet high. They have to make it unique enough. The goal was to make this monument to these women unique enough that no one would have to look for it when they came into the park. To design a monument with minimum maintenance and long-term longevity and ease of maintenance. Mr. Christian, thank you for being here and supporting this effort. Now I'm explaining why this monument is here. The most common question asked, why is the 688 monument in Leavenworth? What did they do here? What's the historical connection? I would say simply this. The Buffalo Soldiers Military Park honors African-American military units. The Buffalo Soldiers was the first all-black unit to serve in peacetime. And they changed the face of the military forever. Some people say it's one minority could have another. And the 6 Triple Eight, being the first all black, black unit to be deployed overseas, changed the face of the army forever. That's a historical image. It's a historical change. Now, I will supply you every need. I can't barely cut a computer on. I walked into executive service the other day, Mr. Chairman Christmas. As I stepped on the top step, I heard a noise. I said, got a unique alarm system. And when I walked through, I heard all the music playing from the streets. Are you dancing? It was my phone. My grandson had put a program on my phone. <laughs> we had an international committee of people working. We had a lady in England researching the areas they lived. Dominique and I say, me and Dominique, my vice chairman research, say, we need a lady, a woman on this project. A few weeks later, retired colonel, getting the comments call, say, where can I help? A couple of days later, Sergeant Major Elizabeth Hammond's Fraser, Fraser, Fraser Hem called, what can I do? They live a short distance apart. Other members, 
is Eddie Tobias, Research Chair Dallas Papers at Library of Congress, Edgar Brookins, News Media, Mary Robinson, fundraiser who worked 30 years ago on the Triple Nickel Project, and Mary Francis, a classmate. I say my warmest and deepest praise for our Vice Chairman and Chief Researcher, Major Dominique Johnson. He's reliable, honest, dedicated, consistent, candidate, candidate, and very talented. He is responsible for the names on the back of that monument. Me, I was just going to put a quote. I say, you own it, and he worked tirelessly, tirelessly for it. I'll let him thank the person that kept him. Everyone who had a project in this project, in any kind of way, proofread that stand. So people can say, if you did anything on this project, stand up. There was more people than that. our keynote speaker for today's ceremony, Major General Douglas Chrisman, Director, Mission Command Center of Excellence, Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Good morning. So I had a chance before the ceremony began to, uh, to, to get to know the other members seated up here on the stage with me and had some conversations with uh, Commander Phil Potton. And he explained to me just, in fact, how difficult it's been for him in those 30 years since he forgot to mention his wife. Uh, and so, I, and I felt, I felt bad for him. Uh, so I'd also like to make sure that uh, I thank uh, Commander Philpott's wife. I, I also had a chance to, uh, to speak with uh, Senator Moran and know how busy his schedule is, both in Washington, D.C. and here in the great state of Kansas, as he represents the good people of, uh, of uh, the state. And uh, Senator, we know how, how busy your time is uh, in and out of Washington. We appreciate you making the choice to be here. Uh, your presence means a lot today. Um, so to the veterans of the 6888, uh, to Mr. Early, uh, other family members of our honored guests, family members of those who served in the 6888, Mrs. Lundy, General Arter, distinguished guests, community leaders, fellow veterans, soldiers, and friends, thanks for being here today for this important occasion. And on behalf of the Combined Armed Center here at Fort Leavenworth and our Commanding General, Lieutenant General Mike Lundy, I am proud to accept the 6888 Central Postal Directory Battalion Monument into the Buffalo Soldier Memorial Park, and we pledge to care for it in a manner befitting the honor of the unit and its veterans deserve. Today is a very special day, one that has been in the making for more than 70 years. We come together today to honor the women of the 6888 Central Postal, Central Directory Postal Battalion, the first and only all African American Women's Army Corps unit to deploy overseas during World War II. We're very fortunate today to have with us five living, living legacies from that unit, all of whom have traveled a great distance to join us today and, uh, as we honor their service to our nation. Maybell Campbell lives in Alexandria, Virginia. After her service in the Women's Army Corps, she worked at the United States Government Printing Office for 30 years. In 2018, she took a dream flight in a restored 1940s Boeing Stearman open cockpit open cockpit biplane from World War II. Elizabeth Johnson lives in Hickory, North Carolina, and was trained as a truck driver at Fort Devens, Massachusetts. She went on to attend Winston-Salem University, where she earned a Bachelor of Science degree in education. She taught middle school for 30 years and volunteered for 17 years in the school system. Lena King joins us from Las Vegas, Nevada. She joined the service after a close friend was killed and it inspired her to do something in his name. She had only been married two months before she joined the 6888 in 1945 and she would serve as a nurse after leaving the service in 1947. 
She said she's glad she lived long enough to see this recognition. And so are we, Nate. Anna Robertson is here from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. To be self-sufficient, she joined the then Women's Army Auxiliary Corps, which preceded the Women's Army Corps in 1943, and her brother joined the Navy. She has eight children, seven daughters and one son, and four of her daughters are with her here today. Dolores Rutter currently lives in Mount Rainier, Maryland. She enlisted in the Women's Army Corps in October 1943, in Washington, D.C., and then trained as a postal clerk in Des Moines, Iowa. After her discharge in 1946, she used the GI Bill to receive training in fashion design in New York and later worked in a bank. Please join me in giving all these wonderful ladies another round of applause. Soldier Educational and Historical Committee. They've worked tirelessly to bring us not just the monument, but seven others here on Fort Leavenworth and make them all a reality. Because of their hard work and dedication, our Army can now more fully understand and memorialize the service and sacrifice of African American soldiers and veterans. Next, I'd like to recognize Eddie Dixon, the sculptor for the monument we celebrate today, for his tireless efforts to bring the face of distinguished African-American soldiers to life. I'd also like to thank the Fort Leavenworth Garrison team who not only organized today's event, but also coordinated the placement of the 6th Triple Eighth Central Postal Directory Battalion Monument in the Buffalo Soldier Memorial Park. This memorial was made possible through the hard work and dedication of so many who simply want to ensure the memory, sacrifices, and legacy of the members of the 6th Triple Eighth are passed down to future generations. Today we also celebrate the 6th Triple Eight by honoring its first commander, Major and later Lieutenant Colonel Charity Edna Adams, and her married name was Early, with a 25-inch bronze bust that sits atop the stone monument. There's a picture in your program, but I highly encourage each of you before you leave today to visit the Buffalo Soldier commemorative area and see it for yourselves. Several quotes are inscribed on the monument. One from General Lundy says, we honor the sacrifices and commitment to duty demonstrated by the soldiers of the 6th Triple Eighth Central Postal Directory Battalion. In the face of adversity, these women answered the nation's call to service with the utmost loyalty and honor. Their, their display of character, commitment, and personal courage is an exemplar for all Army professionals. It's fitting today that Lieutenant Colonel Ad Adams represents the unit. From the accounts I've read, she was described as a fearless leader in service to the women under her command. A member of the first female officer training class in Iowa and the first African-American Women's Army Auxiliary Corps commissioned officer, she was also the highest ranking African-American female officer by the end of the war. Her reputation was earned during a time when, as we know, she and her unit had to endure difficult and often demeaning conditions many of which had nothing to do with the war. Lieutenant Colonel Adams symbolizes her unit that had many firsts for women. Uh, had many firsts for women, for African Americans, and for our Army. I hope our actions here today will help serve to educate us all and generations that follow that accomplishments, uh, perseverance, camaraderie, and patriotism can in fact carry the day. So let's try to put ourselves in their shoes for a minute, shall we? Let's imagine that these, what these women encountered when they arrived in Birmingham, England. It's February 1945. The famous Battle of the Bulge had literally ended just a month prior. English winter weather in February is not much different from Kansas. Maybe a little less windy, but lots more fog. And everything pretty much looks like a black and white movie for those of you in the audience who still remember what that looks like. These ladies, are then, these ladies are then shown to their office, which is a series of warehouses filled with millions of pieces of mail intended for American service members serving somewhere in the theater. So picture airplane hangers literally, literally full of undelivered Christmas packages with more mail coming in each day. There's no heat, so the women wore long johns and extra layers of clothing under their uniforms. There was poor lighting since the windows had been blacked out to prevent light showing through during nighttime airtime air raids. 
Rats sought out packages of spoiled cakes and cookies. There were seven million troops in theater at the time, and most were constantly on the move as the Allies continued their drive across Europe. Mail delivery was difficult at best, but just like our deployed soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines today, even in the worst of conditions, they notice when they're not getting their mail. So there was certainly a problem that needed to be solved. This was what the 6th Trip Lake arrived to, and this is the enormous challenge they undertook. And this was a unit that had already seen its share of challenges even before they arrived. The 6th Trip Lake organized themselves into three separate eight-hour shifts so work could continue around the clock, seven days a week. They maintained over seven million information cards, not automated, not computerized, probably in a series of three by five cards organized in, in, in small card trays. And they tracked individual service members, their units, and their likely locations to try to get them linked up with their mail. They dealt with undeliverable mail, which was sent to their location for redirection. They investigated insufficiently address mail for clues to determine the intended recipient. And they all too often handled the sad duty of returning mail addressed to service members who've been killed in action. Sometimes mail was addressed to no more than just a nickname like Junior in U.S. Army. Imagine, no automated databases, no, bar no barcode scanning, no Googling to find the right zip code. There was only the hard work, ingenuity, grit, and devotion of the 6 AAA. They were given six months to get it all sorted out. They did it in three. I think it's fair to say they delivered literally and figuratively. The unit broke all sorts of records, sorting, repackaging, redistributing letters and parcels. Before the 6 AAA arrived, the monthly average for, for parcels sorted was 624,000. These women averaged more than 5 million letters and parcels per month in the 90 days they served in England. That can-do spirit would remain a hallmark of the unit and carry them through a, seem, a second seemingly impossible task by clearing two additional backlogs of mail in France before the war ended and they were able to return home. After the war, the members of the 6 AAA returned to their lives and for the most part, their story remained untold, at least not far beyond their family and friends. Today, we're here to do our part to tell their story and commemorate their service by dedicating this monument Fort Leavenworth is rich in its own military history. One very special site here on post is the Buffalo Soldier Memorial Park, where this monument honoring the women of the 6 AAA now serves as another source of pride and inspiration for all those who read its words, study its pictures, and remember the deeds it symbolizes. Lieutenant Colonel Adams once said when she spoke to students, uh, they would ask her, how did it feel to know you were making history? Her answer was simply, I just wanted to do my job. I think we can all agree that what Charity, Adams Early, and the women of the 6 AAA accomplished was indeed so much more than that. We're forever grateful for their willingness to serve during a time of war and for their unwavering commitment to each other, to our 7 million service members, and to our nation. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Stanley Early. Thank you and good morning. I am excited and honored to be here to just say a few words to um, acknowledge um, how important this, this, this monument is. Uh, I'm so pleased to talk a little bit about my mother and about the 6 AAA. Um, but first I want to say, uh, as others have, thank you to the many organizations and individuals who have made contributions of all kinds in this country and from Europe to make this happen. And I would especially like to thank um, Mr. Philpott and the members of the Buffalo Soldiers Monument Committee for all they've done to make this happen today. This is a great day, and it's a great event, and it's a wonderful way to recognize the 6 AAA. Uh, in particular, to recognize the five women who are sitting here today from that 
It's almost impossible to express the scale of the task that you faced. I won't go into all the things that have been said. But without all of the electronic data systems and the various aids we have today, to accomplish what they did is uh, a mere miracle. The work they did uh, under the stress they had was incredibly impressive, and they did what they needed to do. Um, I want, my mother, had, I just want to say a few words about my mother. Um, she was always enormously proud of the 6th AAA. I, after the war, she did a wide variety of things. And she taught at two different universities. She was, uh, the, uh, the, she was the head of the Housing Authority, the Board of the Housing Authority in Dayton, Ohio, where I grew up and where she lived most of her life. She was on the National Board of the Red Cross. She helped to, she led the, she was one of the leaders of in, integrating the schools in Dayton. She started a civil rights organization in Dayton. They focused on education for young people. She was on the board of the power company. She was on the board of one of the larger banks in the Midwest. She did a wide variety of things and she always did it with thoroughness. But with all of those things, the thing she was most proud of was being was the six AAA, and all of the things that not that the members did not only during the war but after, because they helped not only win the war but to make the country the great country it is today. I also would like to say one more thing. My mother was always very focused on young people, and where. Uh, where we're going in the future, and much of what she did was related to education. There's a song that I really like called Ella's Song that a group called Sweet Honey in the Rock did. Some of you may know that. There's a line in that, and that is, young people come first. They have the courage where we fail, and if I can just shed some light so they, they carry us through the gale. And I think that's how she felt about many things. And one of the reasons why this monument is so important is because this monument will give a lot of guidance to, to future generations. Personally, I've been contacted in the last couple of years by students from all over the country. I was giving a presentation at Charity Adams Early Elementary School in Dayton uh, a few years ago about uh, uh, to thank a group of people who were doing a plaque for that school, who were students from Yellow Springs, Ohio, at the same time received, at the same time, uh, they had gotten information from, from uh, a student in Seattle, Washington, who was an eighth grader, who wrote, got an award for writing about the 6 AAA. So the 6 AAA has already inspired so many young people. And this morning, this monument is a statement of responsibility, determination, and honor that is a gift from the recent past addressed to the future.
I want to tell you that uh, Marsha Holder, over here, stand up, Marsha. I couldn't, we couldn't get to 841 names without her. I hope you all, when you look at these names, that you realize that most of the women came from the deep south, traveled north to enlist. And that's how they are represented on the monument. If you look at New York, it's very large. Most of those women do not come from New York. Um, you have uh, Ms. 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 King right here is from the deep south, came to Philadelphia to, to join the, the, uh, the WACs. Um, so it's very heartfelt that we took care of and looked for, make sure your names were spelled correctly. I know we failed somewhere. Uh, we feel really bad about not finding the last 14 to make it 855. But uh, with determination, with Martha um, and with others who tried to come forward that we already had their name, we, we, uh, we were able to do that. Uh, everything that you see here was, was, it was, was uh, new to us, knowledge to come forward, we verified, we checked, we went over and over and over that stuff. And uh, hopefully we got it. And I want to thank you. Thank you, Carlin, for the uh, dragging me up here when I was going like this. And, uh, uh, but uh, thank you very much for letting me come up and say thank you to you for your service. Thank you for coming. Thank you uh, for acknowledging me. Well, and, uh, thank you very much. your kids in school here for the past 24 years. So, uh, we are very happy to get this over with. <laughs> State of Kansas, who, after his remarks, with the assistance of Mr. Early and Major General Chrisman, will unveil a picture of the State Senate Resolution 412 from the United States Senate. Senator Jerry Moran. Well, thank you so much. Uh, let me tell you that uh, it's an honor to be here with the folks uh, that I'm seated with, uh, General, uh, Commander. Garrison Commander, Mr. Early, uh, you would expect me to say uh, that it is a privilege to be here. You would expect me to say it's an honor to join you. I've said that hundreds of times in my life, in hundreds of different settings. It is so sincerely felt to hear it is well with my soul played today, set the stage for what I think is a very special occasion, something more than just one more time to say I'm honored to be with you. This is a very unique moment. To see as these ladies were, were recognized, as things said about them were spoken, to watch their reaction. I have the advantage of looking into their faces as their stories are being told this morning. And the smile, the smiles that I saw this morning tell me this is something different than just another special occasion. We honor you. We learn from you. We're inspired by you. We've had an opportunity to play a role in recognizing you. 
And it was such a privilege on the floor of the United States Senate when every United States Senator voted in favor of a Senate resolution recognizing your service and your sacrifice. It saddens me that we didn't do this earlier when not only you could hear and see and feel the respect, but all those that you served with could have the same experience that you're having today. I'm sorry we were so slow. You know, I work in a place in which it's, uh, at least in history, it used to be seen as a place of honor and respect. That we look to our leaders for the future of our country. What I see sitting here this morning is the, the value, the wealth, the future of the United States of America is not found in the people in Washington, D.C., but it's found by the American people across the country, coming from all walks of life, in circumstances and in dignity that you experienced and still said there's a cause greater than me. There's something more important in life than just taking care of myself. And the ladies of the 6888 did that in spades. We recognize today that there is this higher calling, and we too often look in the wrong places for heroes. Sometimes I've heard, you know, there aren't any heroes left today. And when we do mention them, there are people who play basketball on a basketball court or sing in an amphitheater who perform on stage. And it's so many times in my life where I found the heroes are the people that I am beside. The last time I presented a Purple Heart, it was the school custodian. It wasn't somebody who was held in this high position. And today we have the opportunity to, to honor you ladies and those you serve with, those who cannot, because we are so late in doing this, be here today. We have the opportunity to recognize your service and to see that we can learn from you and we should model our lives after the way you have lived yours. I return to Washington, D.C. on Sunday or Monday. I come home to Kansas every weekend. I'll be back on an airplane and I'll be with my colleagues in the nation's capital next week. I want to tell each and every one of them about what I saw and heard here, about the inspiration that you provided. And I want not just to be able to tell the story, but I hope that it changes our lives in the way that we do business. There's way too much division in this country. No one in this room, and there are so many who served our nation, served because they were a Republican or a Democrat. They served because they thought they could make their country safer, their family more secure, the world a better place. And the return to Washington, D.C., having spent these moments with you ladies, will be, please listen to me, senators. Please listen to me and use these ladies as a model for the way that we should conduct our lives and our business. I would tell you that my work is not done in regard to the recognition that you deserve. We are full force ahead on seeing that there is a meritorious unit citation for the six triple eight. Not that that will not be achieved by me, but I can tell you I've been to the Army Chief, General Milley, and said, General Milley, I need your help. And he's committed to providing that help. And I no longer think I'm going out on a limb here. I no longer think it's a question of if that unit citation that should have been issued years ago is issued. The issue is how soon can we get it completed. Finally, uh, my dad is a World War II veteran, served in Europe. I never thought about his family. 
I never thought about his packages. My mom went to work for a penny store in Emporia, Kansas, and, and worked there for the four years my dad was in the service. I never thought on a personal level until I was with you today what role you and others played in my family's life to make sure that my mom and dad communicated with each other for the long period of World War II. So from my family, a personal thank you to you for keep, keeping two people who love each other together. You did them a great service. Now finally, one more story about my dad. So, on occasion, I will walk up to the Lincoln Memorial. I'm looking for inspiration in a place called Washington, D.C. And it's generally found out there and not in the offices of Capitol Hill. So I'll walk up to the Lincoln Memorial. And I'll go by now the World War II Memorial, built in your honor, in large part because of the sacrifice by another World War II veteran, a Kansan named Bob Dole who made certain that that World War II memorial was built. On that wall, way to the Lincoln Memorial, it's the World War II, and it's the Vietnam Wall on my way back. It's the Korean War Memorial. So I get as far, this is just as the World War II memorial is almost to be, it's, all, it's, it's been built, the ceremony dedicating it is soon to happen. And I go by the World War II memorial, and I find the Kansas pillar. And I thought about my dad back home in Plainville, Kansas. So I stepped away from the memorial and I called my dad. I had my cell phone with me. And fortunately for me, I got his voicemail. Because the things I said to my dad that day were things that's hard for sons and daughters to say to their moms and dads. Perhaps some of those you, of you in the second and third rows have know what I'm speaking about. We don't often enough say the things that we should to our parents. So it was easy for me because I got the voicemail. And I said, Dad, I'm at the World War II Memorial. It was built in your honor. Dad, I want you to know that I thank you for your service. I respect you. And Dad, I love you. I walk back to my office after the, completing my journey to the Lincoln Memorial, and while I'm walking back to my office, my cell phone rings. It's my dad. He says, Gerald, you left me a message. I couldn't understand it. Would you repeat it? <laughs> my dad in Plainville, Kansas, died a couple years ago at age 98. I can't repeat it to my dad today. But what I can do is repeat it to you, to the five women here, to your mother, and the others in this room. And what I would say when we unveil this memorial, when we unveil this monument, what we're really saying is this. Thank you for your service. We respect you. And we love you. God bless you and your families. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator, Senator Moran will present copies of the Senate resolution to the living legacy as well as to Mr. Early, in honor of his mother, Lieutenant Colonel Charity Adams Early.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are also honored today to present an official proclamation signed by Governor Jeff Collier, Governor of the Greater State of Kansas, which says, Now therefore I, Jeff Collier, Governor of the State of Kansas, do hereby commemorate the morale-boosting efforts of the 6888. I encourage all Kansans to learn about the history of the 6888 and visit the memorial which is being dedicated on November 30th, 2018 done at the Capitol in Topeka under the great seal of the state this 20th day of November, 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also honored today to present an official proclamation signed by Mark Preisinger, Mayor, Leavenworth, Kansas, which says, I, Mark Preisinger, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, hereby proclaim and honor the 6888 Central Postal Directory Battalion World War II All Black Woman Army Corps. In witness thereof, I set my hand and have affixed the great seal of the city of Leavenworth, Kansas. This 30th day of November in the year 2018. The mayor has individualized his proclamation for each of the five 6888 members present and to all deceased members, families who are in attendance today. Also, on 11 November 2018, a flag was unfurled at the, Women, at the Women in Military Service for America Memorial at Arlington National Cemetery in tribute to the 6888 Central Postal Directory Battalion. After the program, the flag will be presented to Colonel Stephanie Dawson, President of the National Military Women's Association for Historical Retention. At this time, Commander Philpott Mr. Dominic Johnson and Mr. Stanley Early will now join Major General Chrisman and Colonel Sutton near the picture of the monument. Major General Chrisman and Mr. Early will unveil the picture symbolizing the unveiling off the 6 AAA Postal Units monument which now resides at the Buffalo Soldier Memorial Park. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the walk duty song and the singing of the army song. The words are on the back of your programs. Please remain in place for the exit of the official party and our honorees. We cordially invite you to join us in the fellowship hall for a brief reception and refreshments. After a short media break, the honorees will be in the fellowship hall for autographs and pictures.
being with us today. This concludes today's ceremony.